Good morning guys, today I'm going to be talking about critiquing your design portfolio. yourself a million times why is it so hard to create your own portfolio I've even questioned myself like am I any good at what I even do because I struggle so much with my own portfolio I'm constantly asking myself like am I ever going to finish this thing and the truth is with over 20 years of building portfolios you would have thought that I would have learned a thing or two but my career has changed in so many ways and I never really thought that I would still have to build a portfolio 20 something years into my career. Two of the most common questions that I get, can I have your CV? And it's an obvious yes. And can I see your portfolio? And a little part of me dies every time somebody asks that because on the one hand, I'm very proud of a lot of the work that I've done. But on the other hand, I know that it's not as good as it could be. I know that it doesn't represent even a fraction of the work that I've done or the things that I'm capable of doing. So in that, I've had to really look and decide for myself, what is it that I want to focus on in my portfolio? Now, the most obvious thing that's there is your work. But anybody who's put a portfolio together in the last five years would realize that just showing your work simply isn't enough. You have to now explain what you did on the project, how you approached problems, and what were the solutions. After the fact, it's really, really difficult to do. You have to first get rid of a few things that are probably in your way. The first thing you have to get out of the way of is being self-critical. It's very easy to be too hard on yourself because you're comparing yourself to other people. But the truth is, nobody's gone on the same journey as you in the exact same way. So you should be proud of the way that you have navigated your way through your career and through the projects that you've worked on. The next thing that people struggle with is that they have got too much stuff to put in there and they're overly cluttering their portfolio and I'd strongly urge people to minimize as much as possible and remember it's more around the story of the project than it is necessarily showing the breadth and detail of every project the other thing I think a lot of people suffer with a lot of people work in a silo they're on their own they're looking at their work with only these two eyes and they need to be getting an objective view so I would encourage all designers to as they're working through their stuff just sense check the content with your colleagues with the people who possibly would hire somebody like you and then the biggest thing is focus most people are focused on the way their portfolio looks and not the content content is king and so if i had to be self-critical i would definitely say where i'm failing in my portfolio is my content now the number one reason for this is that while i'm working i never ever take the time to capture what i'm doing and put it in my portfolio even if that project is maybe only going to be released a year from from now I tend to forget that wait someday I want to want to put it in my portfolio I'm too focused on the work in front of me now this is a good problem to have I mean I, I would say that's nice for any employer to know but these things will come out in conversation hopefully in your interview but initially what you've got to do is show people what you can do and so I would encourage you going forward to always, as you're working through a project, screen things, write down notes, build a little case study while you're going through the project so that when you do finally release it, you actually have something. 
I cannot tell you how many projects throughout my career, all I do is show the end product. I have no information about why we solved the problem, what we did, what were some of the challenges, none of that, right up to this day. I have to go by memory and the truth is my memory is a bit vague and that doesn't necessarily sell me in the best way. A final thought here is that quite often what I'm doing is I'm selling a bunch of problems that might not be relative to where I want to go in my career and that is something that is probably key to getting your next opportunity is showing how you can do the job you want so guys this might be a series of videos and so the first thing that I'm going to do today is ask myself some key questions as I critique my own website. Before I go through my site, one of the first questions that I think you should ask yourself when you're looking at your portfolio is, are you your own worst client? And the truth is, I probably am. And for the first time in a 20 year career where the majority of the awards that I've ever won were for my personal portfolios, I actually wish I was in a position to pay somebody to do the content for my website because I'm truly my own worst enemy. The first question I have to myself is, do I clearly communicate my role in the projects that I've done? So let's go take a look. Okay, let's go to more work. Okay, so hopefully the first impression is that I've done a lot of really big work with some big names, some big brands, and some familiar faces. So my latest project that I have in my portfolio, which isn't my latest project, that'll come, the NetBank design system. So what I've done here is I've titled it, I've put in a video, and I've added a bunch of screens so that people can see what it looks like. What I've failed to do is add a link to the design system, which I'm probably not going to be able to do because it's not something that they openly want shared to the public, given that this is for a bank. So I've put screens to show what it looks like and I made a video. But I didn't say, when did we do this? How did we do it? What was my role? What's the outcome? I haven't done any of that. So it's a failure on my part to put the best content forward. Okay, let's go to the next piece in my portfolio. In this portfolio, it's, it's the NetBank work that I did between 2016 and the end of 2018. I've Got a header that says NetBank and it says in just over two years at NetBank, one of South Africa's leading financial blah blah blah, I was part of building up and leading design within the bank and grew the design team to well over 100 designers. That's more like 150. 100 designers, writers, developers, animators who delivered on projects across the business, including apps, web, client facing, internal systems, a rebrand and oper operational uh, restructuring and innovation. Here are just a few projects I'm proud to share. Okay, so that's quite comprehensive and could probably use a little bit of craft. I probably wrote that in between things and I probably haven't given it a lot of thought and I haven't touched it since. Now, I don't mind that too much, but I do feel that what I'm missing is a real breakdown of exactly when I was there, because I haven't included you, even though I've told you. I've not included what I did outside of saying that I helped build the design team, but there's some things in here where I am 
the guy who made all of the decisions, who got all these things built, who conceptualized things, who directed a team of people who then executed them across the organization. There's a lot more that's, going, that's gone on here. Now, the question that I ask myself is, should each one of these be different pieces in my portfolio? Should I do the app separately and the create a vision for the bank separately and then the online banking and all the icons and illustrations and why didn't I include the touch screens and you know what how do I mention that there's a design system and that seems to be separate so it's all hella confusing so yeah it's definitely something that I feel that I need to work on and break up more and then talk to some of the history behind all of that now this is just a question and I hope somebody will comment down below but do I actually go and make little videos about each one of these projects would that not be like a new innovative way of sharing portfolios given that we're very much in the video phase and do people actually really read my only concern then is do people actually really watch these videos if, especially if they're too long so it is something that I need to think about maybe I just need to stick a voice over and do a bunch of little videos I'd love to hear your feedback please put a comment below all right so I've put in quite a hefty video here four and a half minutes then I've got some screens of the website that we concepted and it's not even the official website that's live now because those developers unfortunately have struggled with the system in place to make this all happen even though we've got a working version of it hell of a thing and then I have got screens of online banking and net bank ID but of course I haven't told anybody like what these are the next thing that I've got is this is our, our, our app and I've got a little video that's only like not even a percent of what the app actually has in it and I've put it on the screen here but it's probably the best video that we ever got made the rest of the time we didn't make any videos we were making the app so it is a struggle I don't have any of these assets I'm the ECD it's not like I have every single file on my machine it's spread out across the design team I've left the bank for over a year now so it would be almost impossible for me to get the assets I need to even create a video and then it would be really time consuming for me to actually go and create videos of everything and the truth is I'm not looking for a job where I make videos of everything I'm looking for a job where I get to lead a design team so I'm trying to think of the, the best thing but I'm trying to show you some of the problems Okay, I've now got a few GIF animations of some of the app features we were playing with, some of the illustrations that we got done, uh, which was some custom work for us and quite hard to get done through a bank. The next thing that I've noticed is that I've got a, like a fault in my HTML, which concerns me quite a bit because I've now got to figure out this like where is the error so I've got to go back into everything and try and work that out but let's move on to the next case study okay so the next case study is for an app I did at another bank and it's my kids banking case study and in this I've got the little intro video that went inside the app I've got some of the illustrations that were done that were the rewards where we gamified the app and then I've got the kids banking logo what I don't have in here is any screens of the actual app but that's because I never got to finish this project I moved on before it went live to public and for the longest time this app was sitting in a dev environment and we coordinated with so many different resources we had a separate 3d company who did the interface we had a development company who pulled together all of the assets and turned this into a working app and coordinated with then another team 
that was on the banking side which fed them the information they needed plus then we had an animation studio and so with these resources being in completely different places none of them touching this outside of the single dev company I just never got all the assets I needed before this went live and as I left the bank I never got the app in order to capture any of this and so I'm sure somewhere I've got some of the build up screens and I think that would tell enough of a story but I've just got to take the time to go and get it um, yeah I mean foolish on my part I should be telling people what was my role what was my daily duties how did I pull this together I think that's the interesting stuff and again I just think a video would be so much more exciting what do you think I then jumped from a project that I did in 2015 and 2016 to an update I did to one of my clients websites in 2015 and I literally have a screen of his landing page in a device and then I have three screens of the mobile version of that now that doesn't tell much of a story at all you know who the DJ is possibly if you're international you're not really gonna care but locally you might know who the DJ is you might know who the the brands are that he works with you might say oh, okay it's kind of a right I can see the consistency between the top and the bottom but anything else there's no story to this and there is an interesting story to this so guys I mean I can see endless holes and I can see what I need to do I need to tell better stories so I think that's it for today I'd like to do some work on this portfolio and the next time that I release this portfolio I'll take you through some of the updates and changes I've made to the portfolio so that you can understand how you can better your portfolio and what you should do and I will be very open to any feedback and critique I can get from anybody else I take on what I believe is valuable and I ignore anything that I think is either not something I can do or something worth investigating my name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. And stay cool.